Hello, this is Vicki Davis. I've worked with the Flat Classroom Project here at Westwood Schools in Camilla, Georgia. And in this video, we are compiling information about what the students actually learned in this project. Um, we used many different resources. Um, the students very much were self-motivated and self-directed. And I'd like to share with you some of the resources that we used as well as the ISTE standards that this project aligned with. You see before you a list of the resources used for this project. Many different software programs, uh, hardware, and uh, websites. We were very open with this website. And although we did not allow MySpace at school, many of the students used their MySpaces at home to coordinate this project. And I think that next time we conduct um, such a project, we will open up MySpace and use that to collaborate as well because that's where the students interact. Um, and I also plan on having a MySpace and doing flat classroom project announcements and that sort of thing in the future. Now, let's look at the knowledge that they acquired on this project. Uh, this project really had a dual nature. Uh, they had some actual information that they learned, uh, academic type information, the actual uh, trends as portrayed by Thomas Friedman in his book, The World is Flat. However, the fascinating thing about this project is not only did they learn about the trends, but they experienced the trends themselves with an incredible experiential knowledge, which in many ways um, was greater than the actual knowledge that they, they read or acquired um, from the book. And many things that happened influenced the information that they put on the wikis. Now the standards that uh, most of us educators look at are the ISTE National Educational Technology Standards for students. And I've got the hyperlink there. I'd like to go through, and I actually believe that this project um, aligned with every single standard that ISTE has. Now, I would like to caution you, this is not a project to do on an everyday basis. And it's not a project to do with beginners. This is a project that was done with a class that had had a year and a half, actually two years, of experience with a variety of software packages, of blogging, about nine months of experience with wikis, and had already learned basic professionalism skills, basic um, knowledge of uh, not to plagiarize, and uh, I had a comfort level with learning new things already instilled in them. And that is absolutely essential before embarking on such a project. Uh, if you throw beginners at this project, then the teacher and the students will become frustrated because the students have to already be self-motivated and understand uh, the potential of grasping the knowledge from the Internet. So I would say this is a great summative project and uh, I think that every student in America should have some sort of project like this before they graduate from high school so they can learn collaboration and can learn um, the many skills uh, to kind of knit together all of their technological experience. So let's look at the standards. The first standard uh, from IST is the basic operations and concepts. Over 15 software programs were used and the students had to determine appropriate software for the objective they wanted to accomplish. They also had several new uh, technologies they had to learn how to use on their own, like Avoca, that they had to do to introduce themselves to their partner. So this is really evidence of the proficiency that I already knew they had. Um, it's very important that the teachers no longer have to stand up in front of the classroom and say, number one, this is what you click, number two, this is what you click, because the software that the students are learning today will be outdated tomorrow. And the only way that the students will not be outdated is if they're self-learners. Uh, second, is social, ethical, and human issues. And we had very ethnically and culturally diverse classrooms. Um, and and yeah, there was a little bit of concern and there was some learning that we had there. But the students really emerged with a greater understanding of their different societies and even exchanged information. For example, Julie's uh, classes were fascinated with uh, quail hunting and some other things that were going on in my classes. And likewise, my classes were fascinated with the fact that uh, they can drive any speed that they would like to drive and the, also the availability of pirated information on the street and the different um, cultural viewpoint on pirating. Uh, in Bangladesh. It's a very open type system and, and it's pretty common to go buy a $2 movie on the street. So there were just some differences there in understanding each other and, uh, and literally 11 hours time difference. Um, it was just fascinating to, to learn. So uh, 
in terms of the second, uh, we were very um, cognizant of the social, ethical, and human issues as relating to the trends in the world is flat and our two different societies, since that's really how we were looking uh, at this uh, project. Uh, students were freely allowed the use of all social networking technologies, including Skype, YouTube, Google Video, MySpace, and email. And we didn't have any incidents. Uh, we did monitor and see what they were doing, but obviously with the time difference, many students were going to have to do work at home, and, and they were very responsible. Uh, we had them communicate with the teachers daily if there were any issues, and, and if there were any minor issues, we discussed those. Uh, if any partners were having trouble connecting or that sort of thing, we, we helped facilitate that connection. Uh, the students were very highly motivated and they came in on the weekends and after schools to participate in this project. In fact, each of us had a Saturday where our students came in to work on this project and, and we were very excited by the motivation and the, the excitement that the students had and how much they were learning and how much they taught us. Uh, let's look at standard number three, technology productivity tools. Um, their productivity and creativity were taxed as they were allowed to use any video editing, sound editing software that they chose that was available to them as well as available for free on the internet. Some students went out and found things and installed them on their local computers. We used uh, some basic hardware, Logitech Quick Cams. Uh, we used video capture. Some of them used cell phones and digital cameras to record. And we also allowed the use of uh, Creative Commons licensed music. Um, students um, collaborate, collaborated quite a bit, both in the discussion tabs on the wiki, which is where we really encouraged it so we could document the discussion process, but also in blog postings. They had audio introductions to each other, and I highly recommend that you have an audio introduction at the beginning of any such project. Uh, I think ideally two weeks before the project kicks off would be best so that the classrooms can become familiar with each other before diving in. Uh, graphics, creative writing, uh, any other digital artifacts as they determine necessary, they were given free reign as long as they met the objective of this project. Now on standard number four, technology communications tools, um, we used wikis and Skype and many other uh, asynchronous and synchronous type uh, programs to allow us to interact between our classrooms. I gave feedback to Miss Lindsay's classroom. She gave feedback to mine. We also had a panel of international judges to give us feedback as teachers and to give the students feedback. In the future, we'd like to add more peer feedback uh, in the process and actually have the teams evaluate one another so that they can more effectively link between their wikis. Um, but we did have, have structures in place to give that feedback. We were very excited that uh, Darren Kuropatwa in Canada, Jeff Utek in China, Joe McClay in Australia, and Terry Friedman in the United Kingdom spent a considerable amount of time giving our students both anecdotal feedback and also used a scoring rubric, uh, which we do plan to simplify in the future so that we can expand it to more classrooms. Um, students use a variety of media, uh, any media out there they were allowed to use, as long as they used it professionally. In terms of technology research tools, standard number five, um, the students started off with the book, The World is Flat, by Thomas Friedman and reading the flatteners and particularly their flattener. And they underlined it and highlighted and, and started with that and then started their research uh, to find artifacts and accurate information. They were really uh, not to defend or um, take a position. They were to determine what they thought was the truth in both sides of the issue uh, from a more objective standpoint. And I think some of the wikis that have emerged, um, the virtual communications, but in particular the outsourcing uh, Wiki did a great job of showing both sides of, of the uh, discussion. Um, and they had to use a wide variety of technology tools for every aspect of this project. In standard number six, technology problem solving and decision making tools, um, the students had to evaluate their flattener from both an industry and educational perspective, but also from an American perspective and from the perspective of someone residing in Bangladesh. And they had to conduct interviews and um, had to 
formulate critical questions for those interviews. And then when they were done, they had to create a summative narrative and a summative video about what they learned. They had real world accountability and deadlines, which is one of the first times they've actually had a deadline that was adhered to. And I believe gave them a, an experience much like uh, what they would experience in the real world. Finally, um, I believe the experiential aspects were probably the most important. Uh, when I conducted the debriefing with my students, some of them used the term professionalism. They were also held accountable for their individual work and it was not something, the, the groups were small enough where one person couldn't sit back and do nothing. Every single person had to contribute, which was difficult for some students who were used to letting the stronger students uh, take over. Also, the wiki gives you a unique method to track exactly discreetly who is participating in the project because you can look in the history tab and see who contributed and who didn't so it gave us some real accountability and when Julie had a, a student who had a lot more participation than I did then that student score could reflect that and, and likewise we could see who was participating. It also taught the students discernment that not every single thing that they found was accurate. Uh, some things were not accurate and they needed to see that. Um, but even in the inaccuracies you can see a perspective uh, that may be important when you discuss the overall issue. Also the students were very creative and uh, had a lot of excitement and energy. Some included bloopers videos at the end of their project and others um, included um, just a spontaneous video that two of them made, particularly Casey's and Canals, they made a, a video between them. They also learned the ethics of having accurate information. We had a few students who copied some information and um, the partners had to work through and, and one may come to me and say, oh, Miss Vicki, I think this is copied. And then Julie and I had to work through that and, and vice versa. Uh, we both had issues in our classrooms that we had to improve on and we were able to work together with that. And the, and the teacher really kind of became the hub or the clearinghouse for all the ethical issues that arose. And, so many teachable moments arose. Uh, we'd learned so much uh, on the ethical aspect of things and it really takes a project like this I think to, to let that happen. The students also learned the importance of work ethic and diligence and if they were out they literally had to come in and make the work up. A lot of times students are allowed to just be out, do a worksheet and it doesn't matter. But if a student missed 50 minutes of class they honestly missed 50 minutes of work they needed to handle. So we had um, some evenings and some Saturdays where we had to work hard. I do think that both classrooms came out of this with a lot of pride. I know Julie said her classroom felt like that they had emerged with a, uh, they said we have put Bangladesh on the map because many people confuse Bangladesh with Bangalore, India. And Bangladesh is on the map and they have spoken very well for their country. Uh, they were very professional and I'd really like to compliment them on on just the amazing work that they did and, and showing that that every country has can have a professionalism and ability to interact uh, on an equal footing with their peers around the world and their peers here in America. We saw cooperation and collaboration. It really, once we made the connections, and I think probably the most difficult part of this project was helping the students make that connections quickly and efficiently and effectively. That's probably the most important thing is to make those connections very, very rapidly. Uh, this was a great project. I'm very proud of the outcome. Uh, I'm very appreciative of Julie's work ethic. We are creating another video about the how-tos of, of how we did the project. But um, I, I feel that we had more learning in two and a half weeks than in the whole prior part of the semester. Although I will say that the, the two years that led up to this project were really essential so that the students would have a sort of intuitive learning uh, model in place and were comfortable out there in the great unknown uh, experiencing and learning and assimilating and summarizing and being creative and they far exceeded my expectations. I've always told this class from the moment I saw them that they were a world-class um, classroom. I've always believed that and they have just uh, far exceeded my expectations, made me look good and I know that Julie feels the same about her outstanding class as well. I appreciate the opportunity to participate in this project and look forward to perhaps being able to have hundreds of classrooms involved in such a project in the future.